got about 30 folk in here right now. Oh uh, man, this this call should be no less than 100 people right here. Hey, people ain't tired. They ain't tired. We got a bunch of calls and a bunch of good stuff going on right now. All right, now you can close Big it out. Big facts, and I don't get tired. That's what I'm talking about. All right, now it's on you. You can close it out. I'm ready to go. All righty. So now we are going to get Adrian, our co-founder, Adrian Dynamite Sloan, to go ahead and take, the, take over the call. If everybody will go ahead and meet your lines, get your notebook and your pen out. Money make, mo huh, excuse me, note takers are the money makers. Go ahead, um, Adrian. Hey, teammates, appreciate you, Chanel, man. Y'all get Chanel some love in the chat, man. Y'all drop us some love and some fire in there, man. That's my little sister, man. We appreciate her, man, for what she has done. Our fire community, uh, Hunt Cash, you always does a great job. Uh, we appreciate you standing in the gap, man. Y'all throw Chanel some love, some heart, some hand claps in there, man. We got to celebrate our teammates. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, my co my co-workers, my co-partners, my business partners, man. It's your boy Adrian Dynamite Sloan, man. We want to come to you uh tonight, man. We're gonna have a quick segment about how to get your check up, right, man. Put some dollar signs in the chat, y'all. If y'all want to hear about how to get your check up, right? You know, you, you want to get that check moving, right? You want to get that rank going up. So listen, man, I got a couple of things on my mind. I'm going to give you some industry standards, right? I'm going to give you some jewels and like some basics, you know, some basic business tips that you got to have, right? If you're going to get that check up. So I'm going to mute everybody out real quick. Let me go through the chat. Let me mute everybody out before we get this deal really, really cranking. Uh, let me mute everybody out. Hold on one second. So we don't got no interruptions in there. Ah, all right, there we go. All right, so listen, listen. Drop the money signs in the chat. Drop them dollar bags in there. Listen, if you want to get that check up, drop them dollar signs. Drop that fire in there. The team of listen, at the end of the day, right, you, you're going to attract, right? You're going to attract what you focus on at the end of the day. So if you want to get that, you want to get your check up. Tonight's call, I'm going to give you some industry principles, right? Tonight, I'm going to give you some industry standards, some things that you just got to focus on. If you're going to be in a network marketing space, right? If you're going to be in a build a business and a business building a type of structure, right? As a leader, there are some key things that you cannot skip. There's some things that you have to do if you're really going to build a organization that's going to have structure, right? Write this down. Your organization has to have structure and stability with controlled growth, right? These are three things that every organization has to have. You have to have structure, right? You gotta have that, that controlled growth, guys. You, you have to have that stability, right? In order to make sure your check not only just spikes up, right? But how do you make sure that that check has sustainability, right? So everybody wants speed, but speed sometimes kills, right? So you understand like Ferraris are dangerous for a reason, right? is a reason why Hondas are a little safer, right? They're not as fast, they're good cars, right? They, they longevity type of vehicles, right? But you know a Honda gonna give you 300,000 miles with no problem, right? You don't never hear about a Ferrari giving you 300,000, 400,000 miles. They're not built for that, they're built for speed, right? So sometimes people want speed, but they need stability. So you gotta understand when you're building your business, you have to build that business to, to maintain, to make sure that business has sustainability. So it's not always how fast do you get your checkup, but what I want to give you in this in this training tonight, I want to make sure I give you the points that you need to make sure your business grow with long term sustainability. Right, as you're getting your checkup, your certain things in the process that you can't skip. You can't skip certain steps, right? And you can't be trying to keep up with the Joneses just to keep up with the Joneses, right? Because at the end of the day, the Joneses can't keep up with themselves. So what I want to make sure we get by the end of this train, I'm gonna give you 45 minutes of just straight dynamite jewels tonight. You're right, and you know, you guys, you know, I don't come out and train as often as much but tonight it was on my heart to really give you guys some training right some training of how to make sure you build your business that at the end of the day you have to have a business that can withstand the test of time not something just going to run up through the rank tractor to get the flyer make sure as you get the flyer 
you don't damage the business, right? So this is a, a, a key component that most people who, who, who haven't been in business for a long span of time, they miss that factor, right? I was a young tiger, I call it ignorant on fire, right? I was that kid that was ignorant on fire and I ran up a lot of compensation charts, but you gotta understand if you do that often, right? You'll put a hole in your bucket. Sometimes your bucket could be filling up, but it got holes in it. So the more you put in, the more you go out. So you're putting a lot in and a lot is coming out. It's because your bucket Bucket has no sustainability, right? You got to make sure that as you're pouring up your production, your organization is growing. My training tonight is to make sure you understand sustainability is key for long-term growth, man. Drop some dollar signs in the chat if you want to make sure that your business has sustainability, right? This is the key to have a long-term success. It's just not about how fast can you get the bag, but how long does the bag last? You understand what I'm saying? This is the key. How long does the bag last, right? So you don't want to damage the bag while you're trying to go get it. You got to make sure you protect the bag, right? So somebody put protect the bag in the chat. You want to make sure that you run up the bag, but protect the bag. Right. And so my my story for, for my background, for those who don't know, a third generation business owner, originally in Newark, New Jersey. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina right now. Uh, high level collegiate athlete came up in small business. I was that kid that when I went to college, I knew I was going to work for myself. Right. I, I'm 36 years old now. I've been in business legitimately since I was 14 years old. Right. I came up in business and always had something like I'm talking about from middle school selling lollipops and annihilators to sodas and quarter waters. Like I was that kid coming up knowing I was always going to do something entrepreneurial. I was that kid that was good with my hands. Like my stepfather used to paint and do a lot of stuff in carpentry. And so I learned how to do a lot of stuff hands-on. And I knew that right at the end of the day, I had to learn how to use my mind, not my back, right? I understood that my mind could last longer than my back. And so for me, using my brain, as becoming a strong entrepreneur, I understood the power of knowledge. So fast forward, my story worked for a lot of Fortune 500 companies, did a lot of business consulting, made millions of dollars in my early 20s, saved hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I retired by the age of 30, right? At the age 30, I had enough money, right? Somebody put financial independence in the chat. And I understood the, the key of long-term uh, uh, longevity for me and my family was to become financially independent. If you don't know what that is, if you take your financial independence numbers, how many does it take for you to last to, to live for 10 to 20 years, right? That's financial independence, right? It's not about how old you are. Some people work jobs for a long time, right? And they get into this position of working for 40 years, but it's something called the 40, 40, 40 rule family. Before I give you these Jews, I want you to understand why I'm giving you these type of nuggets because I want you to understand and be able to live based on the same sustainability that I've learned over my 20, 25 years in the industry is a key to it, right? You got to understand, guys, at the end of the day, proper preparation is going to prevent poor performance. You, you got to understand, you got to prepare properly if you're going to be successful. And I just understood coming up early in life that if I was going to sustain, I had to learn money and I had to manage my money. So my financial independence number to me was very, very important to make sure I made money and I saved my money, right? You got to make your money and you got to save it, but you can't run up a lot of money in business without key principles to sustain. So by the time I was age 30, I retired. I didn't work for a year, a year and a half, and I lived off my money and I enjoyed my family. And I went back to building more traditional business, doing more consulting. Hence now, as a CFO in the Extreme FX Global Academy, I'm extremely excited to be able to, to teach a lot of individuals how to get a bag, right? How to run a checkup, right? And I gotta make sure if you build it, you don't damage the bag, right? As you build it, you gotta build some key principles so that you could be a high six figure and seven figure earner and you can make a hundred thousand, save a hundred thousand, give away a hundred thousand. Y'all know this is my principle, right? Somebody put in the chat, make a hundred thousand, save a hundred thousand, give away a hundred thousand. So you gotta get to the point where you can give away six figures and it don't even bother you. You got to get to that point where you can give away six figures and you don't even flinch. When you got your own scholarship funds or entrepreneurship programs, our children ha shouldn't have to apply for scholarships. If we pay the price up front, we become the scholarship, right? They don't have to play for a scholarship. 
you gift the scholarship based on your work ethic, right? So I'm going to give you guys seven dynamite principles today that I really feel like is going to help you get your checkups. So get these pins out, right? Get these pins out, man. I took notes and gave y'all some heat to this. I want to make sure that I didn't miss one of the points that I want to give y'all. So make sure you take notes tonight, man. I see a lot of the family out there in the chat, man. I'm glad to see a lot of y'all in here tonight, man. I hope you grab something for this and share with your family. This, this will be recorded, so we'll put it back out there. All right, number one, right? You better learn how to prospect. If you're going to be serious in this industry, you have to learn to master the prospect, right? You have three different types of market when you're prospecting, right? You have a hot market, you have a cold market, and you have a warm market. These are three different markets for three different types of individuals that you have to know how to communicate to these three different type of groups of people three different ways. So Sloan, what's the difference between the three? Hot market is friends and family. That's your mother, your sister, your cousin. Hot market. If you're sharing an opportunity with them, you just maybe say, hey, what's up, DJ? Listen, man, I got this new opportunity I'm looking at, bro. I definitely want you to take a look at it. Hey, listen, you keep options open. Hey, take a look at it. It's what I'm doing. So some of my partners, I think it'd be good for you. Watch this video. Call me once you finish. You can have a regular conversation. Because if you're, if you're signing a real can to them, they can be like, man, what you selling, man? What you... Because they know you don't talk in, in a certain manner. Everybody has a certain dialogue of how they deal with their hot market. So your conversation with your hot market, it should be the same as it is if you're talking about the football game, right? Your hot market, your, warm, your cold, let's go cold first. Your cold market is an absolute stranger. You may be somewhere out. You may be at the suit store, right? DJ may be out to go get him a suit real quick. Got an event to go to. He may be in there shopping. Him and the brother, they in the same aisle looking for the same. Uh, they looking at tie together. And he may spot his shoe. Man, that's some, that's some nice shoes, bro. Man, it's real nice. Where you get those from? I like that. Nice. Kanye Brown, man, that's dope, bro. He going to be oh, yeah, man, I got these. Say, man, that's dope, man. Me and my wife are looking at some stuff like that. Man, you in business? Uh, what kind of business you do? What kind of work you do? Oh, yeah, man, I'm a contractor. Oh, man, I'm, I'm a CEO for this company. Oh, he going to say whatever his job is. Okay, great, man. That's that's awesome. And listen, man, you're a sharp individual, bro. Listen, I'm not going. I don't have a lot of time to talk right now. But definitely, you like the type of person I like to be in business with. Do you keep your options open to make some extra money part-time or outside of your work, career change? I know it's a lot going to pandemic right now. But you like a sharp, but I definitely would like to talk to you later. I got to go right now, but I definitely want to talk to you later, if you don't mind. Can we exchange numbers? And so what you want to do, you want to pull out your phone. So at that time, you want to pull out your phone and say, hey, listen, real quick, bro, I'm going to text you my number real quick. What's your number? Put your head down. Don't say nothing. Don't even look up because you expect them to give you your number. So if I say, hey, what's your number? And I put my head down. Then all I'm doing is I'm leaning forward. I'm listening for the number and I'm taking the number. Okay, perfect. Hey, what's your name again? Okay, perfect. I mean, my name's Sloan, bro. I agree. Good to meet you, but hey, man, enjoy your event, man. Talk to you later. I, I hit you up for coffee. Cold market, prospect. You find a compliment, you, you spark a conversation, you exchange information, you gone, right? That's cold market. So you got to learn how to prospect hot market, basic friends and family, cold market, spark up a conversation, find something intriguing. If y'all got some vibration going, then you ask them the question, you keep your options open to make some extra money part-time outside of what you're doing, possibly a career change. They say, yes, no, maybe so. Okay, cool, great. Me and my partners expanded, looking for some sharp individuals. Thought you got an opportunity maybe fitting for you. Not sure, but definitely want to talk to you. Hey, listen, look, what's your number? I I'm going to send you my number real quick. Don't say, what's your number? Because people feel like you're taking something from them extend out i always extend myself first the key of prospecting is you have to be the one to become vulnerable you have to be vulnerable first so you have to say hey listen real quick bro, i'm about to send you my number but in order to send you uh for you to send them their number they have to give you their number too right so i'm gonna say hey listen i'm gonna give you my number which means i'm the one opening up and extending myself to you right and i'm gonna put my head i'm gonna, I'm gonna take that data i'm gonna say okay perfect what's your name what's your number again he ain't even say it the first time, but I'm going to say, what you say your number is again? Okay, perfect. Send. That's it. I am going to call you later. That's cold market. Warm market is a friend of a friend, right? So let's just say me and DJ, I'm talking to DJ. DJ is my cousin. So I'm talking to DJ about my opportunity to say, listen, DJ, I'm looking to expand out my business with some folks that feel like, you know, sharp, definitely looking for the right type of people that I can build with, right? Not some master builder. I want some good quality for who you think is, you know, entrepreneurial, business-minded, he going to say, okay, call Hadassah. So he going to say, okay, call Aisha. He going to say, okay, call Chanel, right? Call Aaron. He going to give me a list of people. 
Now, listen, in my previous opportunities, we used to take referrals, and this is just standard business. Learn how to call your referrals. I have no issue to this day calling referrals. If I get a list of people from Chanel, I'm going to call them. Hey, what's going on, Chanel? I know you probably don't know me. My name is Adrian Sloan. I got your number from DJ. You know DJ, right? He's going to say, yeah, I know DJ. Okay, great. Listen, DJ gave me information. He, he's a good friend of mine. He, I asked DJ for a list of people he felt like was entrepreneur, hardworking, go get us, right? Looking for opportunity. One of the first people DJ said was you. Is that you? Are, are you that person? She's like, yeah, that's me. Yeah, DJ know who you were talking about. Okay, perfect. Listen, real quick. My company, we're expanding right now, looking for some sharp individuals. Right now, I want to see if you keep your options to make some extra money part-time outside of your job. Direct question. She going to say, okay, yeah, of course I do it. Listen, right now my company's expanding. I'm going to send you a 15-minute video real quick. I'd like you to take a good look at it, a serious look at it, right? Do you have time right now to do it? If not, I can call you back. I can send it back to you later time. Give it to them. Take it away. She said, yes, I got time. I said, great. I'm about to send you the video right now. Right now it's 1030. I'm going to call you back at 1045, 1050. I got another call to make, and I'm going to call you back. Is that cool? Okay, great. All right, perfect. I right, send her the video, call her back. Hey, what's going on, Chanel? This long call. How'd you like that video? What intrigued you the most? She's going to give me some feedback. Okay, great. Listen, right now you feel like there's something good fit for you. You want to move forward with that? She's going to say yes. I'm going to say, great. I'm going to send the link. Go ahead and get you enrolled. She said, no, I got some questions. Perfect. Listen, whatever question you have, I definitely want to make sure I get an answer for you. What's your question? You're going to ask her questions at that time. Now, what, I'm, what am I doing now? A PS3, peak interest show to plan three-way call. I roll right into the system. I prospected through the Walmart market, got a lead, called them, showed the plan, piqued the interest. Now I'm about to get on a three-way call. Now, by this time, I already know how that regular. Hey, regular, listen, I got some folks I'm working on today. If you're available, I'm going to do a couple of three-way calls, right? I'm calling my list between this time frame. I'm going to reach out to you, shoot you a text if they interest. Okay, cool. So now my upline and my success line is ready for me. I got my work hours. I'm prospecting correctly. I done made some contacts. Now I'm about to three-way call. For the clothes, here go to slam the, here go to alley you for the dunk. I done gave it up. Hey, Reagan, I got I got Chanel on the line. Very interested, ready to move forward. Had a couple questions she wanted to get answered. Want to see if you can smooth it out for me real quick, okay? I right, great. PS3 done. See the difference of it is, and I'm gonna go into more stuff later. So I'm gonna stop that part right there. I think I gave you enough meat on the bone, man. Drop some fire in the chat if you thought that role play was good for you, right? I want to give you three different ways of how to prospect. You got to understand it's three different types of conversations. You have a hot market, a warm market, a cold market, right? So you can't have the same conversation with everybody expecting to get the same result. As a professional in this industry, we understand it's three different mindsets, three different conversations. So the number one dynamite Jew I want to give you all today is understand how to prospect. Number two is set a schedule, right? Number two, somebody keep up in the chat, right? Set a schedule. You have to make sure you have a schedule, right? Again, proper preparation prevents poor performance. And everything in life, if you prepare properly, you can perform properly. If you have a poor preparation, you have a poor execution, right? They come together. Don't ever think life gonna give you something that you didn't prepare for. If you wanna be successful, it's gonna be on purpose, not on accident. Write that down. Success is on purpose, not on accident. You have to prepare yourself to be successful. So your schedule is your checkbook. Write that down. Your schedule is your checkbook, right? If you understand that how you manage your time wisely is ultimately how you're going to write your check, right? Based upon, see, some of y'all didn't look at it like that. Y'all thought just a schedule you had or not. Your schedule is your checkbook, right? Based on your business of how you execute your day-to-day -day operation, that's going to dictate the money that you bring into your family. Y'all don't ever get that twisted. Don't ever get that confused. At the end of the day, your schedule is going to dictate your checkbook. So what you want to do is, listen, write this down. You got to make time because you don't have time. Nugget number one, under uh, making your own schedule. You got to make time because naturally you don't have time. Entrepreneurs don't have time. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't noticed, we don't have time. Because when a person called, they were like, hey, what's going on, son? I know you don't have a whole lot of time, but da 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 Why? They know I don't have time, right? We don't have time as entrepreneurs. So what do we have to do? We have to make time, right? Write this book down, Eat That Frog. Some of y'all are master procrastinators. Y'all know my saying, right? Procrastination is the assassination of your destination. You will kill your future that this great God has given us to manifest in our life. You will kill your future. You will kill your own dreams. It is self-destruction to procrastinate. God has given you something amazing 
and you would self-destruct it because you won't take enough time to make time. You got to make time for the things that you're supposed to be doing because that's your goals, loved ones. It's your dreams. So how do you expect to go to a place that you ain't prepared for? Even the scriptures say, Jesus said, I go to a, go to a preparable place for you. So how, he had to go prepare to get ready for us. So how are you going to expect to be successful if you don't prepare for yours? Come on, y'all. Yo, this stuff is plain. You got to prepare to be successful. You don't just become successful because you want to be. It don't happen like that, y'all. If you're going to get your checkup, you got to master your daggone schedule. Your schedule is your checkbook. Number one, make time because you don't have time. Number two, you got to schedule call time, prospect time, follow-up time. You got to schedule that stuff. Look at your book, right? We used to have something called a success planner, right? My whole organization, when I do my Monday morning meetings, my manager checkup, you couldn't come to my meeting without a schedule. You couldn't come to my meeting. You couldn't sit in, you couldn't sit in my office if you didn't have a schedule because lip, people like the lip box too much and being an entrepreneur, they lip box too much. Let me tell you something. You can lie to yourself all day long, but don't lie to me. Don't lie to your wife, your family, your kids, and don't lie to your teammates if you say you want to win, but you don't run no daggone schedule. I don't believe you. Because if I ask you, what did you do with your time? And you can't tell me, I can pretty be assured that you didn't really execute at a high level. Simple and plain. Because if I were pull your schedule, your schedule would clearly have checks on it. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. Boom. That's how you plan to be successful. An entrepreneur got a plan, they work and work, they plan. You don't daydream all day and whatever you get done, you get done. You ain't gonna never make a high six figure income like that. I'll be the first one to tell you, you will never make a high six figure and seven figure income building a business if you don't run a schedule because our lives is too busy and too many things get in the way. Y'all know I'm telling the truth, right? I love y'all, but I got to tell you the truth. You got to schedule your success. Your, your schedule is your checkbook. You got to make sure you plan your call time. You got to maintain a good, uh, another bullet point here. You got to maintain a consistent call a schedule with your organization. Because remember, in our business, your check goes up as your people does. So I always say your, your check, come on. Your check is a reflection of your leadership, right? So if you don't like your check, work on your leadership, build up your people, right? Schedule a call time consistently that your people can re re rely on, right? Because remember, people like to follow consistent leaders. Mm. People like to follow consistent leaders. So just as you have a normal schedule, you have to plan the programming of your organization. And this is the big boy call. This ain't for the little people. This, this ain't the people with the little mind. Like I, I'm trying to give you the big boy call. The six-figure, seven-figure income conversation. People love to follow consistent leaders. So it's a hard time for a person to maintain a consistent income being an inconsistent leader. Mm. You can't maintain it. You see, you may be able to obtain it, but you can't maintain it because you have to be consistent in your execution with your schedule, even with your team, in order to maintain the level of income that you want to maintain. The reason why Extreme FX Global Academy had, it exploded, right? God blessed it and it exploded because as founders, our schedule was so disciplined, we didn't miss a beat. I'm, man, God is my witness, we didn't miss a beat. Right, we missed some sleep, you know what I'm saying? But we ain't miss a beat because we had a schedule every day. We was charted out. We knew what we needed to get done. We had an execution plan. We talked every day. We had multiple Zooms every day. So what happened was that execution schedule kept compounding. See, your activity in your business is going to compound like compound interest does for investments and money. So you got to learn how to compound your efforts in your business. Y'all write that down. Compound your efforts. You got to make sure you do that. So when you make a schedule and you're executing at a high level every single day, the brain and the body gets on one accord and your muscle memory of execution gets better. I'm telling you, all trust me on this. one. I'm trying to get your check up, but we got to fix your habits. You see, you got to fix your habits to fix your check. Right. But remember, your life, your life is com is compressed about of the decision that you made. See, the decision that you made yesterday dictated today. Right. But the decision that you will make today is going to dictate your decisions of your, your life of tomorrow.
right? We are all comprised of our divine decisions. So your boy Dynamite is trying to help you get in the habit of scheduling better to make better decisions to make your check better. Because people are only going to follow consistent leader. Remember, you may you may uh, 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 obtain it, but you can't maintain it being inconsistent, guys. We got to make sure we do that, right? And the last thing that I did, what I said, maintain your call. I said the last thing. Point number three, right? You got to know your team. Now, this is crucial, too, for your team builders. You got to know your team, y'all. Please write this down. Number three, this may help somebody. Know your team. What I mean by that, you got to know your leaders and you got to know your helpers. Write that down. So you got to know your leaders and you got to know your helpers. So you got to understand something. When, when you talk about putting pressure on people, right? And we talk about this in sports all the time. See, as a coach, we had to identify, right? What type of player can we put what type of pressure on? See, I'm a quarterback, right? I used to take 11 men down the field and we got to go. I'm used to getting hit in the back from the side, dirt in my mask, you know, snot knocked out of my face, like eyes, bloodshot red, broke a finger, got hit, you know, broke a finger, got hit between two helmets before, had to keep playing. I'm used to like intense pressure. So a coach coaching a dynamite, no, he can hit me and I'm going to get mad. But when I get mad, I execute different. See, every coach got to know their players, right? Some players, you can crunch them and it brings the best out of them. This is my point. See, you got to know your leaders, right? Then you got to know some people, your helpers. You can crush them trying to pull that greatness out of them and they're going to fall back because they, they're, not, they're not used to that level of coaching. Right. So you got to figure out a different way to inspire that person. Some people like that a action attitude kind of go, go, go. Let's get it. Some people, they can't take that. Right. But they serve in a different capacity. Some per some person has to be the assistant to the leader. You follow me? See that leader, you got to know that personality, what's going to snatch it out of them. You got to know that if you're going to build your checkup, because you got to be able to hit some of your leaders. Like I can call Aaron or Sean. I bet, man, what's going on? What's up? And he's going to come on, coach, I'm trying to do this. Like, we can go, ah, 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 ah. we can go all the way there. But all right, oh, perfect, all right, let's go, let's go. We're good, and we out of here. And that's the whole conversation. And somebody be looking like, man, this boy crazy, man, what's wrong with them? But we know the language. We can speak each other language. You got to know your leaders. See, I may have to call, uh, let's say I got to call Liz, and I'll be like, what's up, Red? Red, listen, I need your help. Man, I need you to help me out, Red. Can you make sure that... We don't forget the waters for the meeting. Can you make sure, like, I'm on point? Can you call Chanel? Make sure she got what she need. You know what I'm saying? Call these different leaders and help me with some three-way calls. I got to change my whole approach, right? Because I'm dealing with a different type of person. I'm dealing with a helper. I'm dealing with an assistant, right? I'm not dealing with that A action, grinded out type of leader. See, some of y'all losing y'all people because y'all crushing them too hard. You don't know your people well enough. See, you just can't take, come on, man, I'm helping somebody. You just can't take the way that you are and expect everybody to take it the way you take it because you're going to run some people off. See, listen, I know if I'm talking to Danya, Danya, one of the most, oh my God, man, soft-spoken, kind-hearted, you know, helping do everything in the world for you. But I know she with me. She ain't going to say a whole lot, but I know she with me. See, that's been my helper. That's been my assistant. And she's been one of my key leaders. But I know how to talk to her. See, if you're going to get your checkup teammates, you got to know your people. I got to move on. But I'm going to leave you with that one. Because that's a whole training by itself. Number four, tap root, right? If you're going to build your check and you're going to get your team to the next level, you got to learn how to tap root. This is old school industry principles right now, right? What is it? It's 1034. We've been up for 35 minutes. Okay, cool. We're 30 minutes in. All right, good deal. Tap rooting, okay? You got to take a leader. When I say when you got to identify your leaders, okay, then you got to take a leader and drive them. See, I was always told you got to go four or five levels deep before you find a leader. Four levels deep, five levels deep, you find a stud, right? So which means if you recruit me, right, then I recruit Chris, and then we get Courtney. I'm just going down the list, then we get Darren, then we get David. Between David and Deanna, I should have me somebody. That's just like me. I can lock arms with, and I got another A action attitude person. Remember, you need a bunch of chiefs and Indians. Like, I'm telling you, you got to have a mixture of leaders and assistants to make a business work. You can't have a whole bunch of leaders because they ain't going to never get along. They ain't going to never get nothing done because their egos get too big and they can't they can't work with each other. They just clash all day, right? It ain't going to happen. Trust me, it ain't going to happen. You can't have a whole bunch of daggone leaders, but you got to have some leaders because you need that grid on every now and again. But then throughout that process, when I said you go four levels deep, what mean two, three, four, right up in there, you found some good people that's assistance. They mellow it out. 
they keep everything copacetic. Even if you build a wall, you only got a beam right in every now and again. You got a beam, there's some sheetrock, there's some beam. Don't forget that. You don't, you don't, you don't have a house built with beams all the way through. It's not natural. And so it's not natural for you to have an organization of eight out of two people all the way through. It's not going to happen. So when you're building your organization, you're going to have some strong structures and you're going to have some help. Some strong structures and you're going to have some help. So when you're tap rooting, you're going to find them all. Then as a leader, you got to learn how to manage them all. You follow me? And this is where the person development coming in play. And that's why at StreamFX, we put the person development back there because the principle that I'm giving you, right? If you, if you, if you, if you take us up from this, man, give me some fire in the chat. If you're getting some from this talk, because what I want to give you is how to get your checkup. And it's also going to be how you can personally develop and get yourself managed the right way, right? You got to get yourself in a position where you becoming way more personally developed, where you understand the growth and the maturity that you got to have if you're going to build a big business. Somebody put big business in the chat. Now, if you're going to build a big business, you got to have this level of maturity. You follow me? If you're going to build a big one. Now, if you just want to make a thousand, two thousand, you ain't got to do all this. You can throw them in there and, you know, let them stick. You know what I'm saying? Like your upline and grab them and, you know, try to get them ready to go for you. But if you want to be the one that's controlling the big business, oh, you got to work on you. These are different things that you just got to do for you. You got to work on your mind. You got to start understanding, right? You know, how to deal with the beams and the sheet rock, understand the dolphins and the whales. Like you got to start understanding the psychology of different people. So you don't run people away. See, I need that person that, you know, help with the wall and the system that, that you know, make sure the schedule, we need them. Or a person like me, we'll be all over the place. We wouldn't get nothing done to me, won't be ran, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, like, we'll be all over the place because our brain is thinking somewhere else. We need a person that's here. Calm, bringing all it together. See, right now in extreme, I change roles, right? Y'all ain't heard me coach like this in two months. You know what I'm saying? Because I changed role. I had to go from the field general, push it, switch roles. Let me get on this side. Let me be the helper. Let me be the assistant. Let me be the one making sure that the house is together, right? It's not, doesn't mean I can't do both. See, some people can do both, but my maturity allowed me to play a different role. You understand what I'm saying? Because I need this house healthy. You follow me? And so we got field generals like the Mega Lynch's and the Jacob Mickles out there. We got the generals, right? So me and Reagan can be in the backside working on the house. But guess what? We can switch it back around. And me and Reagan can go back to the front, right? Because we know how to run the field too. So maturity and personal development, guys, how you going to build your business, right? So tap root all the way down till you find you a leader. Then go in. Number five, we almost done with this, right? Replicate your process. This is key, right? We almost done with this, man. Replicate your process. Right, you gotta understand this, guys. You gotta be able to teach your system. See, write this down. Systems win, but people fail. Systems win, but people fail. See, this is the key. And if you go back to an old training me and uh, Megan did when we first came back from Tampa, see, I talked about the difference between replication and duplication, right? So let me help you guys with this, because I see duplication in the chat already. Let me help you with this real quick. Let me give you a little dynamite rope adult real quick, right? See, there's a difference between replication and duplication. What's the difference, right? Duplication is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Duplication actually by definition means deviation. So though we may say loosely in this industry, let's duplicate, let's duplicate, let's duplicate. If you understand duplication, by definition, is deviation. So do we really want people to deviate? Or do we want people to become replicas? Mm. It's a difference. A replica is an offspring of the master copy. Mm. Here we go. So this is what we really want, right? We really want replicas. We don't want duplicates because we don't want deviation. So what you got to get to the point of it is, is you, you want replication, not duplication, because you want to offspring off the master copy. So this is why you have to make sure as a leader, you're running trainings to keep people close to who? The master. So you got to make sure you like Bruce Lee and you the dad going dojo and you doing Kung Fu, right? You got, why they say, when they say master, come on, man, catch on to this stuff. This is why it's like this. This is why Kung Fu and karate movies is so key because they call them the master because somebody got to be sensei. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to be the master. So when you're building your business, guess what? You got to become the daggone master. You got to be the one that the offspring of the organization springs off of. You don't want deviation. 
You don't want a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. So when we used to burn CDs back in the day, right? When you had to file all the CDs and two for five, you know, so you got one for five, three for 10. You know, we are here chefing with the CDs and the DVDs, right? Every now and again, you get a DVD that don't work. Every now and again, you get a CD that don't work. You see what I'm saying? Because that burner, come on, man, that copy, you know, it got messed up. You make it a copy of a copy of a copy. It's, it's so, it, ain't, it ain't gonna work right. You gotta understand. What we want in this business, is replication. See, when you replicate in your processes, you're going to slow down and you're going to make sure your team got it. See, I believe in training the trainers. See, a person just can't tell me, so I'm going to train. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to train. Let me hear it. Let me listen. And I'm going to listen because at the end of the day, every trainer need a trainer. Every mentor need a mentee, right? You know, everybody who's a mentor, they still a mentee to somebody, right? And so we have to get good at understanding how to train the trainer. So that's where the replication comes into place. God, we got to replicate our process, the PS3s, right? The three-way call, the edification. Please take time to understand this, right? That you have to become that master that your team can replicate off of. And we're going to get back into the Super Saturday training and stuff like that. If y'all like this training I'm doing right now, man, show some love in the chat, man. If you want this chat again, man, if you want this call again, man, say again. Just put again in the chat if you want me to do some more talks like this because this is the value that I want to bring this stream, right? This is what I want to give you guys. I want to make sure that I'm bringing the right mindset so we can get these checks up the right way, that we can grow our businesses and take it to the next level, guys, because at the end of the day, we want to grow our checks quickly but we want to maintain them. It's not about just obtaining, it's about maintaining. There's a reason why I've been a high six-figure earner for a long time, but I know how to get my check up, but I know how to keep my bag, right? That's the key. You got to know how to keep your bag. I start getting anxiety if my bag start getting crazy because I understand this game called money so well, right? So number six, right? let's keep going, right? Always cast your vision. Now, this is going to be good, man, for our people right here, man. I got two more points for y'all, and we're going to get y'all out of here, man. So I, was gonna get, I told the founder I was going to give y'all an hour tonight. I, I'm right there 40 minutes. I, we, we good on time, y'all straight? All right? All right, so always cast your vision, okay? This is where we at, family. Always cast your vision, right? And I'm going to tell you why, right? Your team should always know your affirmation. Now, watch this, right? As the leader, as the leader, you're casting the vision, right? Your team should know your vision. Because no, what, what's happening? When the leader is casting the vision, now you're trying to become a high six-figure, seven-figure earner, right? When you're casting the vision, your team should know it because your team is going to help you accomplish it, right? We got the whole Black Wall Street thing. Why? Because Megan cast her vision. She That was her vision. So the, the common unity picked up on the vision. Why? Because the vision had to be big enough that the whole team could put their vision in it. So your vision can't be small. Come on, y'all. The vision can't be so small that it only takes care of you. Then it's no place for me because your vision too small. So you can't follow a leader who got a little vision. So you got to make sure your vision is big enough. Come on. That your whole team can get in. It. See, that's the key. If you want to get your checkup, if you want to understand how to build a massive organization, if you really want to take your team to a whole nother dimension, then baby boy, baby girl, your vision got to be big. Your vision got to be enormous that when you speak it, people get uncomfortable. Come on, man. It got to be so big that people get uncomfortable when they hear it. They think you tweaking. They're like, man, ain't no way you're going to be able to do all that. See, it got to be like that. You follow me? Because you're going to find some folk that's crazy enough like you to believe just like that, too. And all you need is one or two or three to agree, man. We need a couple just to touch and agree and watch what happens. The impossible becomes possible. Possible. How can four people from four different corners of the earth build a multi-billion dollar organization in less than seven days? In less than 30 days, get an organization that's paying out over $150,000 on the first seven-day cycle. How did it happen? Because we had a couple people that believed crazy. We had a couple folk that was believing out of this world. They, they was believing something bigger than ourselves. So what happened? It allowed 31,000 people, come on, man, to believe with us to take something to another level. Man, y'all put some fire in the chat, man. I'm telling you, your dream, your vision got to be big enough. It could take people to another level. You follow me? So as a leader, what's your vision? What you thinking about? What you dreaming about? 
right? It gotta be big. It gotta be. It gotta be uncomfortable, right? But that's that's what you gotta drive off for, right? Y'all, you need a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole bunch of people. You know, when I was young, I thought you had you, you had, I had to have a whole bunch of people. No, you don't. Mm -mm. Listen, my man Nips made it plain. He said, "Circle got smaller. Everybody can't go." This what we gotta understand. Jay said, "Less is more. It's plenty of us." See, you gotta understand. <laughs> More, less is more. You don't need everybody. I need a few people that can believe crazy like me. That's all I need. And we'll go take over the world. See, we could take, I, I done seen, I sat down and served on Ray Lewis Council two and a half, three years ago. Some of y'all know my story where I served on Ray Lewis Council as one of his lead strategists when he was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Look on my page. The, the pictures are there. Me and Eugene Mitchell, look them up on a billionaire situation with New York Life. Me and Eugene Mitchell was partners. He served as the CEO, I served as the CFO. Ain't that something? Three years later, I'm back at being a CFO, right? God prepared me for this. In that moment, I seen seven people raise $200 million in 24 to 48 hours. <laughs> I seen seven people raise $200 million in 48 hours. And it's funny because they were dealing with crypto at that time back in Africa that was going to be mine as well as it was dealing with solar panels in Africa. So I was on that council going to have to go to Africa to serve with Ray to build up these the, these solar panel situations together, right? And we end up going different direction with that deal, man. But God blessed me to sit around just crazy faith. You know what I'm saying? Like to sit around crazy faith to see seven people raise $200 million dollars having lunch and then we went to the cigar lounge that night in Boca Raton, Ray got a cigar joint. We go to the cigar joint, we smoke a cigar. We have some conversation. I sit down with Dr. McCoy, billion dollar businesses, real estate all over the country. We eating chicken wings together. I'm like, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. And I see them make a couple phone calls and they had crazy faith and built a multi-billion dollar brand. So when I hear billion dollar brand in extreme, I don't, that don't bother me. I done seen it already. I've seen it. You know what I'm saying? So it don't take a whole lot of people, is my point, to get a whole lot of results, right? But you got to understand, y'all, what's your, what's your belief, right? How big is your vision? So this is mine. I'm going to give you five of my affirmations. Your team should know your affirmations. You guys are my team. What are some of dynamite affirmations? Number one, I will help over a thousand people have a high six-figure and seven-figure income. I will help over a hundred people have a seven-figure a seven figure income. Over a hundred people have a seven-figure income and more. I will create an ecosystem where my team do not need banks. We only need each other. Let me say that again. I will create a financial ecosystem where my team does not need banks. We only need each other. See, I believe that if I got 100,000, if, if I got a deal and, I, and, and, and it's, it's, it's 200,000, right? And I got 100,000, I got 200,000, you got 200,000. We both can put up 100,000 and we can go do a deal. We don't need a bank. We are each other's bank. So we got to get our mind back to understanding, y'all, that we create our own ecosystem. See, this is my goal. I don't trust banks, right? I ain't, I, it's whatever. I've been in finance a long time, and I still don't trust them because I understand too much about them, how they crooks. So what I do understand is I trust my team. I promise if I got a quarter million, and, and Aaron got a quarter million, and Sean got a quarter million, and Reagan got a quarter million, and Chanel got a quarter million, and Hadassah got a quarter million, and, and, and Dad go, uh, 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 Travis, the Lion King got a quarter million. You follow what I'm saying? If Bridget got a quarter million, I promise you, if we find some real estate building that's dilapidated and we put $50,000 together, we'll build a whole community. I promise you, we can build something with our own money, but we don't need the bank. See, that's one of my affirmations, is to build a financial ecosystem where my team don't need banks. We need each other. Come on, I hope y'all catch that, right? Well, we buy buildings and not clothes. That's another one of my affirmations. My, me and my team, we buy buildings. We don't buy clothes. I got a bunch of clothes, right? But my mindset of it is me and my team, we buy buildings. So when we having conversations, our conversations is a little deeper than just fashion. It's deeper than clothes. We buy buildings. Like, bro, you ain't buying no houses? Like, you ain't got no houses? Like, what's wrong with you, right? It's Monopoly, bro. Wait, like, what? You know, greenhouse, one hotel, like, you ain't bought no houses shit? Oh, man, you childish. Like, that's the kind of conversation, you know, that we got to be on. Where's well, childish if you ain't buying real estate? Like, one of the first things God gave Adam and Eve in the garden was real estate. So what do you mean you ain't got no real estate? You ain't got no land? 
So you ain't you ain't been you know you ain't been paying attention since the beginning of time that God been blessing people with real estate. That was one of the first blessings. He put them in the garden. What's the garden? Real estate. You ain't got no houses. You ain't got no land. That's childish. This is the mindset that we gotta have, right? Because this is where growth comes from. These are my affirmations. So we go through business to produce the income to do what? To feed the affirmation. You understand what I'm saying? See, the last thing is we create generational wealth with seven streams of income, minimum. That me and everybody in my team got seven streams of income, minimum. We got money coming from different places. See, I take a drop out of seven buckets then a flow from one. I'll never forget that. I'll take a drop out of seven buckets then a strong flow from one. Because what I understand is that we got to drop from several buckets. It's going to accumulate with more stability. Remember I told you earlier, your business got to have stability. You follow me? We got to have stability. So we understand that that's key is a drop from a lot. So if you got a flow from one, you're going to pay too much attention to that one. And you go, it's going to be hard to realize how many issues that one have. And you only focus on that one thing. So if we get cut off, you stuck. I don't want that. Give me a little bit from a lot. So that's one of our goals. The last thing, guys, number seven, man. Listen, put some fire in the chat, man. You guys enjoyed this, man. Your boy Dynamite, we about to be out of here, man. Listen, I got nine minutes, man, and we out of here, man. Listen, the last thing, teammates, listen, celebrate the process, man. Celebrate the process. You know, that's all I can tell you, man. You got to celebrate the process, man. You got to be in a situation, man, where you celebrate the process. Like, listen, the journey is not comfortable. The journey is not always what we want it to be. I promise you, listen, if, if you could crack me open all the way to the bone marrow and dissect the story of my life to be where I am at to, at this point in my life, it ain't comfortable. But what I learned how to do, man, is get comfortable being uncomfortable, man. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable and learn how to celebrate the process. You know what I mean? So it, what is it? What is the income? What is the rank? Is your living condition? Is your house? Is your health? Whatever the process of it is, you got to get you got to get to the point where you start to celebrate the incremental steps of progress. See, listen, let me tell you something. You don't ever want to be in a situation in life where you just celebrate the destination because many people don't make it to the destination. Let's be honest. Most entrepreneurs don't make it to the end of the yellow brick road. Let's just let's make it clear. So what, what, wouldn't it be a sad day if you go through your whole life and you frustrated, right? Follow me on this. Wouldn't it be a sad day if you go through your whole life and God has blessed you with so many short-term victories and so many incremental victories along the way that you never celebrated? Psh, that ain't the big one. That ain't the big one. Nah, I'm I'm looking for this one. That ain't that ain't it. And you 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 you're starting to be ungrateful. You know what I'm saying? You, you're starting to be unappreciative, right? Of these incremental blessings. See, see, you gotta understand that success is stepping stones. And every time you make a step in the right direction, it's a blessing for your business. And what happens of it is you learn to appreciate, follow me, every step of the journey. See, you can't appreciate the run without the step. Don't ever forget that. You can't appreciate the run and disrespect the step. See, every step is going to help you get better at being a leader. It's going to help you understanding your organization. Man, I, I, I felt one of y'all catch y'all y'all caught that. I felt y'all catch that. That hit y'all heart out there. I felt it in my spirit. Every step is important of the process of being able to 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 get to a ma a, a, a masses that you can appreciate the growth of your check going up. You see, see, if my check go up one rank this week and I'm getting better and I'm getting better next week, okay, I then may, may take me two more weeks, right, to get to the next rank, but I'm getting better. I'm in the back office. I'm working on my craft. I'm on with Chi and Christy. I'm going through the back office with Kiana. I'm working in there with, with Aaron and, and, and King Pip in the corner, and I'm, I'm celebrating with Tony, man. We having a good time, man. We making steps. I'm learning how to copy and paste in my MetaTrader 4. We're making steps. I may not have a whole big lot size yet, man, but we're making the right steps. We're going in the right direction. And after a while, some see somebody watching me, right? I'm celebrating my process. I'm, I'm putting up my flyers. I'm celebrating my team. I'm congratulating everybody on what's happening over this, guys. We are growing. We are growing. You know what I mean? And make sure that we are going in the right direction. Team, what's going to happen is the growth that I'm that I'm happening as my check is coming up, man. Y'all catching it, man. People watching y'all celebrate. 
See, people watch y'all on social media, right? People watch you in your family. People watch you in your community. They watching you grow your check up. So you got to celebrate the whole daggone process. You can't just celebrate when you get the monarch or you get the emperor, empress, or you get the platinum. Man, you got to celebrate every process, man. Listen, I didn't hit the ranks. I wanted to hit first out the gate. I'm in the back off. I'm a competitor. Was I upset? Of course I was. But what I did, I celebrated my team. Oh, man, I gave it up. Why? Because people watching me too. You follow me? They watching me too, right? They know we're building something. They see we got a bunch of success going on. But what happened is we, people hit me up. Hey, son, what y'all got going on? Right, people in my inbox. You see, see that's what got to happen is, right? We got to grow the maturity, y'all, to celebrate the process. Celebrate the whole thing. Celebrate, you know? Even when you want to, celebrate it, right? Push it, because you got to understand, you can't respect the run and disrespect the walk. You can't run till you learn how to walk and you can't walk till you learn how to crawl. So everything in business success is your check going to come up. It's always going to be a reflection of how you grew up, right? I always say your check go up as you grow up. And I ain't talking about age because wisdom don't always come with age, right? Wisdom come with experience. I know a bunch of old fools <laughs> and I know a bunch of young wise men. You follow me? Because wisdom don't come with age. Wisdom come with experience. So it's what a person been through that dictates where they at and where they going, right? So I want to make sure we gave y'all some, some key points tonight, man. A, B, C, man. Always be celebrating. You know what I mean? A, B, C. Always be celebrating, man. I want everybody on here to be celebrating your teammates, celebrating the community, man. We're doing such a great job out there to be helping everybody and pushing everybody up, man. I just want to commend everybody for what you're doing because you're doing an amazing job. And I just want to say I appreciate you. So I just want to take some time tonight. We got a founders call tonight. So I got to get off of here, get on the founders call before they be, uh, you know, they be keeping me back in the closet, y'all. They, they, they don't let me come out often, right? But uh, tonight, man, I feel compelled to be on my heart. Man, just to share my love, man, and give y'all some keys to get your check up right now. Because I know we're coming through the middle of the week. A lot of y'all pushing for ranks. You're going to the next level. So I wanted to make sure that we really understand what it's going to take for you to not only grow your check, but maintain your check. See, I want y'all to start thinking about how to grow and maintain at the same time, right? So don't grow, right, in risk of losing. Because sometimes you can push too far too fast and you're going to lose. Don't ever jeopardize your growth risking for the wrong reason. You follow me? So let's make sure we got that under control. Man, it's your boy Dynamite Slow, man. Y'all know my saying, I believe in being a living legend, not a dead one, man. Somebody got to pay the price up front and forward, no discount. You only can get the door, you only can get the success from the front door, never the back door. So let's make sure you're paying the price, right? Somebody got to be the person that's over the mantelpiece for the family that paid the price in four teammates. So let it be you, man. It's your boy Dynamite Slow, and peace and blessings, man. We out of here, man. We appreciate y'all hopping on. On, on a on down to my first session of get your check up, man. We're gonna do this again, man. I'm gonna unmute everybody. Great job, great job. Awesome. Great job, great job. Drop it awesome. 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 Great things, Mr. Dynamite. Living legend. Thank you. Appreciate it, family. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adrian. That was awesome. amazing. Yes, sir. That was, that was awesome. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. That was a dynamite right there. Come on, Alan. Yes, What's up, brother? <laughs> hey, brother. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Congratulations, Alan. Hey, Congratulations. Thank you. 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 Thank a meeting of a deliberative or judicial somebody project. somebody studying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alamine. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Congratulations, Alamine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Alamine. Tony. Yes, sir. You killing it. I Man, love it. it bro. Hey, bro, you the bomb.com, Alamine. We appreciate you, brother. You're doing a great job, man. Yes, We're so man. proud of you. Yeah, yeah, Alamine. Thank you so much. I just got some dynamite from you, so. <laughs> got everything. Everywhere I go, I just pull it in. <laughs> and you say, boom. Boom. Yeah. Alamine, I'm trying to get you. I, they I'm had trying. to pull me out of the closet today, y'all. Yeah, I, thank you, thank I had you. to jump out of the bushes today, y'all. I had to come out of there, man. We appreciate <laughs> it. We appreciate it. They let oh, you come out. Man. They let you come out, Sloan. They yeah, just for a little bit, you know. Can you know we, I'm going back to my closet. <laughs> yes. Can we, can, we, can we have this? Can we listen to this again? Did you just did you record it? Yes, sir. It's recorded. That, that was a Bible, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. Man.
Yeah, yeah, you, in the closet with you. Nope. you dropping yeah, it in the chat, Adrian, in the or it's going to be on YouTube?